Okay, you're cute. We're going live in a sec. Okay. Well, hello everybody, and welcome once again to the latest edition of the In World Review. Today being September. Yeah, we made it to September last week, didn't we? So we're one week in, and it's September the 8th of 2013, which, if you're watching this in replay several hundred years hence, <laughs> you might really want to know. Otherwise, you could just take, take my word for it. It's, <laughs> it's still 2013. Um, even in cyberspace, even in cyberspace, you can hear them all sniggering at the other end here. They're, they're, they're just waiting for me to burst out in the coughing spree. I've had a little buggy in my throaty all week. And um, I keep coming on air thinking, how am I going to handle this? But we usually manage to get through it now. And as they say, the show must go on. So... Here I am endeavouring to um, keep the noises out of my microphone and everything that goes with them for that matter. Anyway, anyway, that aside. Um, but as most of you know, at the beginning of the show here, I normally round up with the sort of um, news from the greater metaverse, as it were. And to, today is no exception, really. Um, uh, the, um, the only incidental news that I can see on my list is the fact that the Singularity Viewer and the Colcura viewer have both updated um, during the course of this week. Um, so much so that the um, Singularity Alpha that I've been using does inform me that it needs an upgrade because the regular viewer is now ahead of the version of the Alpha I was using. Uh, go figure. Go figure. But all this is quite crucial because the big news of the week and um, you can't have missed it if you listen to this program regularly, is the um, a great open simulator uh, conference, uh, which um, opened yesterday and indeed is still going on at this very moment. I have spent um, literally all yesterday and um, all the other uh, half of today over there. And um, I have to say, we, we, we'll come back to this in uh, later weeks, maybe next week. Um, obviously, a lot of it's going on at the moment, so people are there rather than here. Uh, but it has been a massive success uh, in my book. Um, the uh, capacity of the um, simulators to handle um, avatars, possibly better than Second Life, um, is astonishing. Um, there have been um, there, there have been a couple of keynotes each day, a keynote speaker and a keynote panel, but there have also uh, been breakout sessions and there have been, um, at any one given time, there have been six different um, breakout sessions going on in different tracks and each one of those tracks has been televised or streamed by Ustream and so it's been very much like a proper conference whether you've been watching on stream or whether you've been um, attending in world you can sort of roll up at the keynote and take your place on one of the sims um, yeah, it, where there's actually four of them so they can cope with a hell of a lot of people and then you wander to the breakout room that you fancy and um, of course the most popular um, events um, have actually really stretched the capacity of avatars on sims um, in the breakout room they've been happening on and um, very successfully too um, but you can't be everywhere at once so I'll no doubt be spending um, the next week watching all the replays um, on Ustream of the sessions I didn't manage to attend in real life because I was at another one if you see what I mean having a choice of six at any given time uh, there have been some highlights of course um, I, w I was particularly keen on yesterday's session on the the, the feature of the hypergrid um, uh, some of the keynote um, discussions on the state of OpenSim, its development, and even indeed um, earlier today on the state of the viewers for OpenSim uh, have been uh, most intriguing. And um, a lot of the individual presentations um, are very good too, um, especially as uh, you're, you're, uh, we, we've been seeing a, a bit of best practices here. Uh, this, um, in terms of using OpenSim, we've had everything from Moses, the military uh, sort of um, control metaverse, through to um, language learning and um, uh, creative things. Even a little bit of Machinima um, came came into it this morning, but um, 
rather elementary for my purposes today's version of the story. We'll talk about that later. So uh, generally, it's um, it's uh, been uh, very rewarding what I've seen so far. I also know that Tara's been there too, and on some occasions has been at different sessions than the ones I attended. Um, anyway, I hope in future weeks we can get some people from uh, the Open Simula back on the show to uh, talk about it um, in, in reflection and give us a, a sort of good overview once the thing has settled. But I, I, I think I think I can say that this has been a great I think a lot of uh, kudos goes to Flea um, uh, Took um, for organising it uh, from the convention point of view and probably to Justin CC and Nab, Neb brother, who was on the show the other week uh, from the sort of coding open simulator side um, for you know, the technical achievements and the two of them working together as it were and the many, many other volunteers involved um have just uh, made it all the greater as a whole so um it's been really enjoyable to be there and congratulations to everybody at um uh, open simulator.org and of course Abacon for bringing it all together um as i say that's my headline of the week really there's not much else that um on the open sim front or even greater metaverse front that competes with that um there are a couple of things um, which I'm going to bring up. I mentioned last week there were some um, worries, um, health worries, about simulated sickness and the Oculus Rift. And um, we didn't really go into it in depth uh, because I was hoping um, to have Will Burns, who really brought all the issue up to me, um, along to talk about it. And um, sadly, I haven't been able to find him today either. Um, so why am I talking about it, you may well ask. <laughs> well, um, interestingly, this morning, um, there was... Uh, hang on a second. Okay, I got the post this morning, but it's actually dated uh, August the 19th, so it's actually out of date, uh, by my reckoning. Um, but it's um, a, a news release. Um, uh, the post is at a company called www.polygon.com. Uh, I actually state that the Oculus Rift people are working to solve simulator sickness um, which would indicate that um, uh, Oculus Rift are actually aware of these problems that we hinted at last week anyway and that they are themselves are actually uh, working um, to uh, you know um, adjust the hardware or whatever they can do to sort of stop the motion sickness uh, kind of effect which is actually created by disconnect with um, the real world. Um, what actually happens is when you are fully immersed in one of these things that goes on your head and completely blinds you to the rest of the world, um, the real world that is, your, your mission in the um, environment is fairly total. Um, and unlike a computer screen where you, know, you can look away and stare at a wall or stare at a window or something if you want to, you know, uh, for a bit like relief. You can't do that when you're in one of these sort of immersion capsules. And after about 20 minutes or so, at that higher resolution, as they are these days, you lose your, your cues from the real world. And what happens is that um, you, you, you become more immersed than is good for you. In a, and when you take the helmet off, for example, you can actually find your body physically um, a, a, having difficulty adjusting to the perceptions we normally see in the real world as opposed to the virtual world. So hidden dangers be a bit behind the sort of, um, it, you know, the progress of uh, immersive worlds, which in, in most respects I'm a keen perpetrator of. Um, what they used to call an evangelist, except I hate that word, first evangelist, but I don't never like the evangelist bit. It reeks of something else. Anyway, anyway, I've rabbited it on enough. Um, sitting next to me, of course, is my partner Tara Yates, and I'm going to hand over to her for her headlines of the week, so to speak. So, hi, Tara. Hi, Mal. <laughs> Good to see you. It's been, uh, with the conference going on, you know, it's kind of like you... You pass in the virtual hallways, and that's about yeah. it. <laughs> makes yeah. for makes for for long long busy days, and a short and stop. I a short stop at the virtual water cooler. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I also find with conferences that there there are points where I kind of hit that overload button, where you know my brain just won't soak up anymore. Um, <laughs> and so I'm really glad that stuff is available for replay and and watching. 
uh, watching later to to uh, pick up on things that I just plain uh, didn't wasn't able to catch. Uh, with they were running they were running on Second Life time sort of, but they were actually starting on U.S. East Coast time. Uh, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings, I'm sorry, six o'clock a.m. my time just not exist. Um, <laughs> that's that's just no. That that <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't get out of bed for something that early in general it, it's a rare thing on a weekend that I'll get up that early for so so there <laughs> keynote sessions that I missed and and like that because of the, uh, the the timing but um good stuff and I one one session I'm going to make a couple of comments on a little later but I'll I'll talk about some other things first um and and I think I'll, I will we'll start with the with the lightweight stuff as I usually do uh my, my assortment of items that uh, my show and tell items this week I have from from two different sources uh, first off uh, on the arm of my chair we have a kitty cat uh, this is a special kitty cat this is a firestorm third anniversary kitty cat um, and he is still available you can still get your very own through the 9th through the 10th of September which is what tomorrow or Tuesday I'm lost track of what day of the week it is. Okay, you've got until Tuesday to uh, pick one up. Um, and what's particularly uh, significant about the uh, the Firestorm Kitty, aside from the fact that he's got a fabulous paint, a Firestorm paint job, um, mm. is he is what's called a perma pet, which means he does not need to be fed ever. But on the other side of the fence, he never breeds, so you can't make little firestorm kittens with him and him and a her. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> the good news is, you two can have a kitty cat and not have to to uh, either spend to feed it or spend to make it a perma pet. <laughs> and in addition, you get a certificate that's good for a starter kitty, a regular starter kitty. So if, if you are so entranced uh, with your firestorm kitty. Uh, and you and you want to get one that uh, will breed and does need to be fed, then you can get one of those for free too. So so it's a you know it's a a, a really nice a really nice gift for a third birthday. So uh, thanks to Firestorm for that. I I think these guys are really really pretty. Um, the other thing I managed to get into the uh, arcade September gotcha this week, um, and there are some there are some some items that are not to be missed. Um, beginning with speaking of kitty cats, uh, at my feet I have two uh, of the Schadenfreude uh, chibi cats, um, and, and there's oh gosh, there must be twenty or thirty different ones uh, in the gotcha. I've got more than these two, but uh, these these two were just representative, and these are just they are terribly cute, um, and uh, and they don't eat and they don't move. <laughs> <laughs> they just sit and look cute. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> there are those. Now, uh, you will also notice uh, in the uh, current camera shot, and I know that uh, uh, Pet Love's got a better one that she'll move up to, I have some ra rather amazing f boots on. Um, and these actually got mentioned in uh, Hamlet's vlog uh, last week. Um, these are uh, from Pandora's Pandora Wigglesworth, uh, Curio Obscura, who is... Um, noteworthy for creating some seriously creative off the wall uh, steampunky items and just just cool stuff. And these are just one of about oh a dozen or so different uh, abomination boots. These happen to be the bitey <laughs> blue ones. Um, I have a couple of I got I got <laughs> I, I sprang for, for 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 four four different uh, rounds on this particular gotcha. Uh, and I have another pair that's got a mouth, and I have two pairs that have eyes in multiple, <laughs> multiple mm, occasions. Boy. Anyway, they're 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 definitely definitely wild and fun. The tongues and, and are sort of straight. That, that's, you know, a, I've seen that tongue before yeah, somewhere. That's a real classic evil yeah, tongue. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> anyway, you can get those. And the third item is, I think, the the thing that I am most impressed with. Um, and that's over to the side of the stage, just to give you a cue, uh, pet love. And this is the Orchestrion from Contraption, created by Faust Steamer. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a couple clicks here, so you can at least see it in in motion. You won't be able to hear it. Um, this is um, when you start it up. Um, various things move inside of it uh, and on it. 
as it plays a unique tune that's been composed specifically for these guys. And it has doors on the front that open up so you can see stuff moving. And around on the back, there's more stuff you can see that's moving. So it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing be, bit of, uh, uh, of construction. Oh, yeah, and, look at that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then there's about eight of these, and I've picked up. I just picked up two because they look pretty cool. Uh, and after I unpacked one, I was just I was just amazed. Uh, and so Very I have nice. to go back and and they're only fifty lindens a piece. Oh my gosh! In the gotcha, I mean, it's just you know, f for this kind of craftsmanship at that price, really? the, the 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 build, the scripting, um, the m original music <laughs> that they play. Um, it's just uh, as I say, this is this is uh, this is a uh, a keeper. Yeah. You know, somebody else is closing the doors, or I it did. is anyway. I'll turn it. <laughs> it was uh, me. I'll turn it off. Okay. <laughs> oh, but I, I like. I've, so says, I've just noticed the chimney at the back produces some steam. <laughs> oh yes, it's it produces steam. This is you know this is very much in the steampunk. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> very nice. Kind of uh, genre, but just beautifully done. Uh, and I, I did actually. I was I was so intrigued. I had to pay a, a visit to the contraption main store, and uh, it is uh, unfortunately that not full of there. There's numerous gadgets sitting around that are real intriguing, uh, but none of them are for sale. <laughs> <laughs> there's but there's 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 some interesting uh, avatar accoutrements and mostly kind of steampunky and kind of some of the. Uh, uh, good for Halloween stuff too. So, but uh, anyway, those that is definitely worth a visit to the arcade. September, gotcha. Um, for the details and a landmark, go to <clears throat> the arcade sl dot com. Um, arcade. The the sim name is Country Club, but it's up like thirty one hundred meters or so uh, where the actual <clears throat> uh, arcade is. It runs through September thirtieth, so you have a little time, which is a good thing because. Um, getting in is still a little difficult. Uh, they still max out uh, with some regularity. <laughs> Anyhow, um, <clears throat> in the RL world, an interesting item this week, that the U.S.'s first inpatient treatment center for Internet addiction uh, is, uh, is in the process of opening. Um, it's um, in Pennsylvania, uh, and it was it's the brainchild of the... the, the uh, Da -da -da -da. Yes, the uh, the founder. There we go. <laughs> I'm trying to read through this. Uh, uh, Dr. Kimberly Young, who is a professor at St. Bonaventure University, who's been studying internet addiction since 1994. So he's been at it for a while. Yeah, you might say he's addicted to studying internet addiction. <laughs> um, he said that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the difficulty with the subject is, uh, when you talk about the controversy behind it, people tend to laugh it off. Um, and, 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 and in fact, he said that's, you know, his work, he's often kind of gotten that reaction to, to his work. Um, and anyway, the program is designed to accommodate four patients at a time who, begin, who all begin and end their treatment on the same day. It's a 10-day stay, and it begins with a 72-hour digital detox, followed by full of Full, a full psychological evaluation. Um, one of the people involved notes that actually the U.S. is way behind other places in, tre in treating this problem and notes China, Korea, and Taiwan all have treatment centers. Um, and uh, uh, until the opening of this new center, the people in needy who need treatment in the U.S. don't have any place to go. Wow. Um, now, the, there's some downsides of this for the individual in the U.S. Uh, Beginning with the fact because internet addictions by the American Psy Psychiatric Association's uh, DSM-5, I think it is now, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, uh, none of the program's $14,000 cost uh, is covered by insurance. Um, but uh, DSM-4, there we go, that's what it is. It's DSM-4 these days. I can never keep track of what number they're on. Um, anyway, it's it's a you know it's it's an interesting issue um, that. It's obviously a ways, there, there are those who feel it's a little premature to, to claim it's a full addiction, but there are some studies that are suggestive um, that the same areas of the brain that light up when alcohol and drug addicts um, support their habit uh, are lighting up for people who are being uh, diagnosed 
as in, uh, internet addiction. So that's kind of interesting, although it doesn't surprise me a whole lot. I'd like to see, you know, studies comparing non-addicts uh, doing various uh, dopamine triggering uh, endorphin triggering things, <laughs> but, right. but uh, yeah, it's an interest. It's an interesting subject. I I suspect any of us who who have really gotten immersed in virtual worlds and online communities can can comprehend uh, the potential for over doing it. Um, and you certainly hear stories, and it's, I think it's. I think it's a particular risk for uh, for young people who don't have the social skills, um, and it can be a place where where they can feel accepted that they may not feel accepted otherwise. Uh, anyway, interesting stuff. Um, let's see. Linden Lab has uh, kind of re-upped on some of their uh, Amazon-based uh, Second Life packs for vehicles and stuff. Uh, the, what was particularly noteworthy was not that all same stuff that's was has been there before but what i uh, caught my attention was uh is uh that these are now available through amazon in the uk and germany so uk and germany folks you too can go buy your very own hoverboard bonus pack uh at amazon if you want to mm. um <laughs> there you go um one of the uh one of the sessions i went to i was going to just mention briefly in passing um that was done by um, Lucena Wisdom Seeker, um, who also did a presentation at uh, Virtual Worlds Best Practices in Education on the sub on the basically a, on the subject of, of lifelong learning and um, basically avoiding the the, sub the subject of avoiding uh, brain uh, basically stimulating brain health in older years and uh, as we age, um, and she did a session on that, Aging Boomers as a, are a growing demographic, um, and uh, she does. A, she has a place called the Whole Grain Health Fairgrounds, um, and uh, basically this is a, a location that gives visitors hands-on experiences and activities that promote well-being as, as people age, based on current research on various things, and uh, her, her, her position is that virtual worlds can effectively offer both education and br about brain fitness and actual practice of behaviors that produce a healthy lifestyle um, which is very which you know which is interesting stuff and certainly rings true uh, to my sense of things from uh, lots of lots of in-world activities not just necessarily aimed at at uh, older users but uh, you know kind of across the board um, and what I wanted to pr particularly note is as part of the um, <clears throat> Open Sim conference this weekend. Follow up this afternoon uh, at 4 p.m. Second Life time, which is still a little ways away. And after the end of the show, uh, there's going to be an open house meetup at the Whole Brain Health Fairgrounds in Second Life. Uh, runs from four to six, and the location is Blue Moon Sim. So uh, um, go check it out. Um, apparently, one of the things they're they're doing regular like monthly. Uh, days where they run a bunch of different activities uh, <clears throat> and challenges, and there's opportunities to interact with people and and try things out. So uh, I think it's well worth worth checking out if you're, you know, if you're um, concerned about maintaining your your you know your overall brain health as you as you get older, um, and probably good good things to pick up if you're not so old yet. Um, Given uh, such things as the item that I noticed in today's at uh, CNN, uh, in connection with music and aging, uh, and <laughs> and some uh, some research that is pointing in the direction that uh, playing a musical instrument uh, can be uh, a beneficial thing for uh, preventing dementia or at least delaying it, uh, and the and the clear advantage seems to be going to. Uh, those who start, who actually have played mu played a musical instrument uh, for some period of time, starting when they were fairly young, um, and I and I sort of sort of smiled at that one since I started piano when I was ten, and certainly played for more than ten years of my life, um, and uh, so it's a, just another one of those examples of things. That if you start early and do it often, that <clears throat> you may well uh, give yourself a better old age. Anyway, enough on that. Um, last little item. Um, I was I was cruising around uh, looking for other things last night, and I had reason to go visit uh, 
Jean de Beau's, pardon my French pronunciation, um, mechanical toy factory for the first time in some time. And I discovered that um, there is now quite a build at ground level there uh, on the Forgotten City sim. Um, and uh, I, I'm sure it's been there for a while, and I just, one of those things that it missed, didn't, didn't hit my radar. But if you're looking for a fun place to go poke around, speaking of steampunky stuff, um, the sim is Forgotten City, land anywhere, or look for a uh, mechanical toy factory, and uh, you can land at the store level, and then you can teleport down to the, to the, uh, all the wonderful city stuff, and there's a, a boat, boats and boats that appear. There are mechanical folks on, that wander around and do things. Uh, there's one that, that lifts a bridge so the boat can depart, which is very cool. <laughs> I was very surprised to see that. Anyway, uh, just a little uh, destination thing. So, And I think that's all I have, so I'm going to toss it back to you, Mel. Well, Whenever. thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, Starry. He says, Cro "Croaky, croaky, croaky." <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting stuff. And I'm going to have to stick clear of those boots of yours for a while, um, amongst other things. Um, yeah, great, great, great stuff. And um, I do remember the uh, session of best practices. Um, I didn't make make that one at the um, Open Sim event yesterday, but um, I forget which. I, I was certainly at something else. Anyway. Um, Vaguely, while we're still on the topic of the open metaverse, uh, what, what other companies I'm surprised um, didn't surface um, at the uh, OpenSim uh, convention, as it was, um, a UK company called Dayden, uh, D-A-D-E-N Limited. Uh, uh, you can find them at uh, dayden.co.uk. Um, but uh, this is uh, uh, quite interesting. I've seen a lot of news items on the Facebooks and the Google Pluses and all the other stuff that comes to the RSS feed um, over the last week or two. Um, and uh, this was for people in the UK more than anything else. Um, the, the second city in the UK, Birmingham, has a library that's um, just opened and it's being uh, hailed and also obviously it's sized by those who don't like new things um, as you know a great architectural thing and also uh, it, it's it's um, being a library of the future you know it's fully high tech and uh, everything else and um, you know it's sort of um, as um, a lot of libraries and things online are sort of trying to redefine the way they work um, in the future you know uh, public funding for the traditional libraries is getting cut and you know you, you get a lot of sort of lines sort of saying like uh, who needs Google um, ask a librarian you know <laughs> and, um, you know promoting the conventional expertise of the librarian but anyway uh, the the new um, this new massive library that's been built in Birmingham has been getting quite a lot, lot of attention and what's quite interesting is that um, I remember this happening about two or three years ago um, but Dayton um, have actually on their website Dayton Co UK published um, a sort of little, uh, well it's an article, 3D technology helps build the new library of Birmingham. And um, uh, darn right really. Um, basically uh, Dayton built this library in the real world but they built it all virtually working with architect uh, architects and engineers and all sorts of things. And uh, the whole thing was built in, um, I think it was an open simulator rather than in Second Life, uh, before the project even went ahead. So uh, the virtual world was li literally used, um, you know, as the um, starting um, base, as it were, for building this um, huge library that has now got so much attention in the real life for us. So anyway, I thought I'd give Dayton some credit there if you want to check them out and just point out that these wonderful buildings uh, you know, constructed in real in the way to the future actually originated in virtual worlds which is a plus point of course isn't it um i've also got a brief link open here before um uh, where this is sort of a second life link um um uh, from daniel voyager's blog um virtual abilities island um uh, gentle errands folk um at virtual ability um could do some great stuff and they're hosting um what's called the idrac um, 2013, which will be on the 27th and 28th of September. Um, IDRAC is the International Disability Rights Advocacy Conference. 
yes now you know why they call it idrac <laughs> um and it, it will be happening in world um on their island on the 27th and the 28th that's a friday saturday of this month um so if you um ah you don't have i don't have a link on hand for virtual ability um it's the sort of thing i'm sure you can find anyway check out virtual ability in world and um you you'll better find out more about that i'm sure um i'll bring you more news of that nearer the date when it actually happens which is i think it, that makes it about two weeks away if i'm right Okay, uh, I'm, I'm just changing browsers here, and lo and behold, I'm still on Daniel Bolger's blog, because he, he on September the 1st, as is his wont, he did a big headline thing, big SL events to attend during September. No doubt he'll do another one at the beginning of October. Uh, but he has pointed out a few interesting things in Second Life we should pay attention to, the first one of which, of course, is the arcade. Yes! the very thing that Tara's been talking about which is on from the 1st of September to the 30th so you've still got plenty of time to go and get the I don't know what we do call this contraption um, to be honest but the, the wonderful contraption to my left that we were looking at a minute ago you can still get it to the 30th um, Twisted Hunt Carnival it's called uh, an Orchestrion there you go go get your go and catch <laughs> <laughs> an orchestrion we have many varieties of orchestra yes at the arcade um and uh yeah um up till the 30th oh typically i haven't got a uh, blonde brown so i haven't got a mouse over show me where the still is but i'll leave that uh the twisted hunt is on again now uh this uh, the, this particular one is called twisted hunt carnival uh it's going on all this month started on the first up to the 30th and um Probably the thing um, most acclaimed about the twisted hunts are that they um, their clues tend to be rather ingenious, sometimes obscure, and it's said to be the most difficult hunt to do in Second Life. And having done it on previous occasions, I have to admit that you can spend an awful, awful, awful lot of time pursuing just one object. You can presumably spend the whole month in Twisted Hunt and not do anything else in Second Life during the whole period. Uh, but um, as I say, if you'd like a challenge, um, that's one for you. And their their um, their prices do tend to be rather good, you know, on the um, on the good side. Although it's often rather bizarre, as you might expect from the name. Um, well, I, I hardly need to tell you about the Open Sim Community Conference. I don't know why it's listed here, because it wasn't in Second Life, but never mind. Um, something from the 14th to 28th, um, which Dan's pointed out, is the Marquis Market. I can't really tell you much more about that, but it looks like a sort of major two weeks um, sort of uh, market up. Um, Designers United which, again, I suspect is a fair from 15th of September to the 4th of October. And I love the name, A Clockwork Spiral. Yes, that's from the 18th to the 22nd. And um, when we get talking in a minute, I'll be able to pursue um, a little bit more about that. Um, there is um, a rather nice sim um, created, I gather, by Timus Tank and Truck Meredith. Uh, called Kalos Galadhon. Yes, indeed. I'm not very good at pronouncing <laughs> virtual names sometimes. <laughs> um, anyway, it has reopened. It did. Re it uh, officially reopened at the beginning of the month, and um, I, I'm I'm looking at um, Ziki's blog, ZikiQuesty.blogspot.uk, and uh, co UK, I should say, and. Um, pictures are absolutely great i think i have actually been here in the past um but uh, look worthy of um another um sort of uh, visit um to actually too many it uh, there are actually too many links here to give out because um, the region is a multi-sim complex um if you look up daniel voyager's blog you will actually see the links to looks like about 12 different simulators that comprise the region and tells you what's on them but um ra rather nice looking place to go to um i'm going to discuss this in a minute actually um 
if I've been thinking straight, I might have actually tried to get Secret Rage um, on with us today as well. Uh, but uh, the the new um, LEA Full Sim art series for September has opened, and um, one of the big talking points there is um, an installation called Commonalities, which was um, done by Secret Rage, who is a wonderful camera woman, works with Aview who's, um, well, La, La Pison, who's um, going to be joining us shortly. And, um, uh, well, uh, the camera woman organizer, she's a bit of everything, isn't she, Lap? <laughs> um, but, she, uh, she's definitely the girl Friday. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> best thing since sliced bread for me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is really her own unique installation at the LEA, and um, it has opened. And um, of course, I was busy on Open Sim yesterday. Um, I did make uh, what well, we'll be talking about um, the show we did last night later. But um, I think there was um, an actual party of some sort with um, was it Paul Andrea playing? Was that yesterday, Lab? Or. or uh, are you, yeah, he played at the uh, opening for Secrets uh, Commonalities uh, yeah. Sim there, yeah, and then followed by Neil Hoffman. Oh, uh, yeah. He drew quite a crowd. Uh, Paul drew uh, quite a crowd there uh, for the opening, and you know, it's the first time I'd ever heard him. Uh-huh. And, um, if, and it really surprised me. It was capturing. I mean, I really liked his music, I liked his sound. Uh, I'd also mention that if you like Bruce Springsteen, the boss, you'll yeah. you'll love Paul because uh, uh, that's about the only thing that I see. Like maybe he was influenced or something that way yeah. in, in his music, but it was it was really good, really good turnout. Yeah. We got a lot of media coverage, so I'm glad about that, and good for secret. In fact, I think Paul, both Paul and Neil Hoffman. Um, are actually real world performers as well. They're not, yeah, they're, yes, not, they're they not are. just mm-hmm. virtual performers. So obviously, right. they they <laughs> it gets a lot more coverage than somebody who's purely virtual. So um, yeah, so um, I'm very pleased for Secret that that seems to have been a great opening, and um, you can pop along and see her um, the the installation, um, and it's and on LEA a, LEA six LEA mm-hmm. six. Yes, it's out there. I was about to announce that. So I uh, do check that one out. Um, what else have I got here? What else have I got here? Ooh, I think that was the major things, actually. So we can sort of, um, yes, I think from here we can move into um, more general stuff. Okay, so um, you you have already uh, probably gathered that we have some other voices in the studio here. Um, those who are not deeply immersed in Open Simulator at this very moment, we managed to put a couple of them in here. Well, we're joined as ever, uh, well, almost ever, by wonderful Pet Love Pet Shop sitting next to me. She's even come on with her laptop today, so she's going to be a mine of information, I can tell. That's, Hi, Pet. That's right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And next to Pet, uh, you've just heard him already, we have La Paisian, AVTV, as many of us just call him. Welcome, Lap. Thank you, Matt. Great to be on. Good to see everybody. Uh, I th- actually, I think quite a good starting point would be um, um, last night. Um, I, I, uh, I missed a very beginning because I was an open sim, of course, but I came along to help co-present the... Uh, um, I don't know what we're calling it. You know, it's the MoMac monthly intro chat or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, a little, little brief history on how it got its name. Uh, originally, uh, <laughs> the event itself was started by Chantel Harvey uh, uh, several years ago. And um, she had named it. And you know, her group is called Mama Shinema. Yeah. So, you know, for a long time in the early days, she had the nickname Mama. And so, uh, when the month of Machinima was uh, conceived, it had the name Mom, you know, just M O M, and that was month of Machinima. Yeah. And then um, she got busy, uh, and in real life with um, uh, some other things, some other projects she was working on, and 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 didn't have the time to maintain that. So. Uh, I kind of stepped in there as I had helped her with a lot of her events prior to that, the international festivals and and things she used to put on in in, in Second Life. And I wanted to preserve some of that, and we had just built the Media Arts Center. So that's where the the MAC came from in the MOM, basically. It's probably not a great acronym or whatever, (laughs) but 
uh, Mo Mac was as close as I could come to keeping mom what she had preserved and adding the new Media Arts Center now which is LEA 7 mm. that's where the uh, uh, Machinima Open Studio Project curated by um, Chick Aeon uh, is located so but that originally was is the Media Arts Center and that's where Mo Mac came from uh, the name Mo Mac anyway and it's a monthly event where we screen machinimas that are, are produced in, in, in Second Life and every other month has a given theme and then the every uh, and then the off month is open theme they can bring in whatever you know they want to do maybe something new they've been working on or um, you know a, a, an old film or whatever they want to share really with with the community and we all get together and we watch these films and then we talk with each other about them and you know discuss techniques and ideologies and uh just i mean we talk about all kinds of stuff you know you, you you've been there so the mm. conversation can get just like it does here in the yeah. in world review you know we we go from one thing to another and as long as the crowd's going with it and that's what they want to talk about then uh, we kind of go with that but it's it's all machinima based pretty much yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's fascinating. And uh, we're hoping to actually film and broadcast it um, uh, properly uh, in the near future. Um, um, I'm mean? going to be perfectly honest with you, Mal. We, you know, I've thought about it anyway ever since it was conceived. In fact, I, I mm -hmm. wanted to put the LEA itself on the air as a means of transparency and, you know, so that the community would know what it'd be like the LEA inside, so to speak, where you're, mm -hmm. actually, where you're actually watching our meetings. You know, to see the yeah. things that we talk about and and the things that we discuss, but that got shot down by everybody in the co in the committee oh. except me. So, <laughs> but as far as MoMac goes, uh, I, mm. I I've wanted to put MoMac on the air for a long time in in some mm. respect, and to be perfectly honest, it's it's the reason is the people to I mean it takes you know it, it takes a lot of people organized uh, to to put on a show uh, and then to put it on a regular basis and and to have those people regularly there and mm. and it, it, that just takes a lot and with all that I'm involved with you know with the website itself and the land dealings I do in in Second Life and the LEA committee and I'm just so swamped that you know I would like to put it on the air so maybe you know, we can sit down and have a beer and we'll have MoMac on In World Review or a segment or maybe you can make up another, uh, at any rate, it's going to take mm. a collaboration. It's just more. Sure, a lot, a lot, so many people don't realize just how much work we have to do behind the scenes to get these things running. But, oh, uh, it's a I, lot. You it's know, lot. It, it's, it's a perfect blend in with the, the machinima talk side of things, um, you know, because um, we're, we're, we're such fans of machinima. We show so much on you know after this show for example the week in review continues with a whole afternoon of machinima as it were um you know so it's great to get the uh, creators and uh, the people actually making these things in talking about it. it's a narrow subject but i think it's one that's very of great interest to everybody and uh, there was even a session this morning at the open sync conference about using machinima to um you know for educational purposes and things um it it was a bit elementary, and I'm I, I rather fear the um, person giving the talk actually thought they were talking to a um, a load of teacher avatars. When in fact, I don't think any teachers were there. They were open sin people. But um, you know, it, it, you know, it's an example of um, you know, it's a powerful art form. Um, you know, and it's going to get um, it's going to become even more major. And of course, it's places like in world here that are on the cusp you know um, uh, environmentally for making them um in the, I, uh, in, the in the last uh, in, in the last three years momac uh time slot as far as you know when we do it has only been changed one time hmm. and that's to the new time now which is like saturday the first saturday of every month hmm. it's uh at 2 p.m uh, that's uh, pacific time or slt times second life time um it uh and we we did that, and we found that we were getting a lot more viewers because uh, our prior time to that was like U.S. based. And though we had a lot of U.S. people, um, we, uh, we 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 were missing out on a lot of the Europeans because of the time slot. It was too late for them, like two or three o'clock in the morning. Most of them were in bed. So maybe what we could do is, uh, you know. Um, 
this is so ingrained. The in-world review is so ingrained in its time slot, and everybody knows is what they're going to do when and, and and all of that that you can't really change that but what maybe we could do is change uh the momac time to the first sunday of every month at uh noon or where or, you know or, or whatever or so that it could be maybe prior to that or a little bit after that so that it could be uh you know a segment uh, as this as you're doing this anyway at the same mm. time well, we could do it. Uh, I, 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 I should say, anybody watching, uh, be it live or in replay, you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I mean, the other possibility is we could do it, uh, for example, once a month at about uh, one thirty or something like that, so that it would immediately follow the show. We just segue into it kind of smoothly. Um, or, uh, you know, there's another, a, 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 a lot of other possibilities there. Uh, how much, basically, would you like to hear? Um, uh, machinima artists, you know, uh, talking and um, obviously we'll watch the machinima too. Um, I, I, it was very funny turning up yesterday because I, I, I think all the entries, including Bet Loves two promo clips, really, uh, well, the um, Mini Hunt and the uh, Black and Mirror promo, um, were things that I showed on this show last week, it, it bar one, <laughs> and that was. And that was Sophia's uh, 15 or 20 minute epic, which I've uploaded and will be showing shortly after this show. So um, <laughs> a great collision of, um, we're, we're kind of showing the same, uh, we will have shown all the clips. Because that's what's response. happening, you know? Yeah, it's exactly. It's very, very current. Yeah. You, you two yeah. are both at the crest of the wave. <laughs> well, it's, that's, that's I, I found that Second Life, its greatest asset to me is its collaborative uh uh, abilities the, I mean like putting on these shows uh, I mean how can you mouse spoke about being in two places at the same time you know like uh, like the other day we were doing Amaretta breedables gig which was an all-day gig uh, you know and then mouse off in open sim doing another gig and and how does all of this come to play on a, on a website or a, or a TV <laughs> or or anything right. mm -hmm. is through the collaboration and so I, I say collaboration is probably Second Life's or Open Sim's greatest uh, greatest asset mm -hmm. you know for accomplishing accomplishing uh, the, all these tasks that in in the real world would uh, just be phenomenal and, and you they'd know, be and, very and the cost expensive too. yeah we can do right. it at such a great exactly. production cost mm -hmm. yeah and they all, uh, there's a no tendency, uh, it's sometimes happens in the real world too, right? it never rains, it pours, they all happen at once, yeah. so you've got <laughs> an open sim conference, you've got an Amaretto's or something in world, you've got a music event, yeah. and they all gotcha choose convention. to go out at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night, so, um, you know, it's a... Uh, yeah, um, you know, if they're broadcasters TV or something, you've got to choose. Uh, I mean, one thing I like about this program, or rather the weekend reviews surrounding it, is that, you know, I just pull the best of the week up and, and, and put it together in one place. So, you know, there'll be things, you know, the mission where I found and stuff, but there'll also be maybe programs that people have missed because they collided with another. So, you know, I hope the channel is just a an editorially focused best way to catch up on all these facets you know that you can go to bit of the people like your site a view where and, you know which is like a a youtube for machinima people so you know you can follow particular machinima makers you can see what's coming up day by day as it happens mm -hmm. you know from the greatest well, that, that, that was the that was the directive or one of the directives for a view tv was to to gather the filmmakers as a community and and aim that like a single spot laser to mainstream media or so that uh and we've had films that that have went out to mainstream like rison's uh video for u2 and jj c coronet's uh video for duran duran mm -hmm. uh you know so it, it slowly but surely it is getting out there and and companies that are dealing with uh, you know real life cost of you know making commercials and and advertisements and promotions and things like that compared to you know what we can do it for uh, you know with our collaborative abilities and skills here uh, is is slowly but surely coming on to us you know that mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're gonna get there we're gonna get there <laughs> Well, the I mean, world will catch up. We're there. The world yeah. has to catch yeah. up. <laughs> oh, we just get better and better, and oh. they catch up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, it's sort of, um, yeah, I mean, so long as what you're doing is, you know, all consuming, uh, uh, well, it's all consuming for us, um, it, it, you know, if the storytelling or the imagery resonates, you know, with um, uh, the, the, the viewer, one well, of the ones we discussed last night, for example, was. Um, Mr. Uh, oh, oh, forgot the name. Forgot the name already. But anyway, she did this one, uh, which um, uh, the, a band called The Prodigy. Um, they they make their back catalogue available for free for machine makers and things. And um, baby you know, got a temper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm not a particular fan of that music. I have to admit. But I mean, I I love that idea because you, t you know uh, the machine maker as the artist has taken the song by a performing artist they love. Um, well, I assume we didn't like them too. There, there, was, a, there was another film there, in Trek too, The Bugged Bunny, oh, yeah. uh, that, that I found really entertaining. And mm. I couldn't help but think, you know, while watching that film, that, you know, I seen Miles' 11th Hour in there somewhere, if you've yeah. watched any of his films. And sure enough, he, he was a collaborative uh, right. in that in that yeah. film so uh, he's that great. Was, i really he wasn't surprised that yeah. that was really a good film too mm. yeah that really a funny really funny yeah that was really funny because he was in the audience too and we was just like oh it's a bit it reminds us of him and then there he was, there he in the was. yeah i did <laughs> I, I actually i did sort of help um but no yeah but coming back to the music thing um i actually thought you know i i could you know if i had time to make a machine moment stuff like that or try you know I, i'd probably go for that so i'd probably go to my music library and dig up a, a track i really like and then think how i can how can i make a music video for this old track you know it might be a track that was even before the days of music video rl style um you know and i'd say right i would you know make a machinima video to go with this track you know like early mtv it's such in machinima form and i think you know if the music drives it and the film quality is good and the editing quality is good then you know um people you will engage will engage with that film um whether they know virtual worlds or not they'll just see it they'll say oh i'm a prodigy and my god that's you know um it was you know this particular one for example um it was fast moving um but as we all know you can't drive cars and do things that fast in second life so you know it was down to the editing. It was all cut really well so that it conveyed the sense of speed by the way the frames were cut interspliced and cut together. Even though if you'd actually watched any particular sequence for too long, you'd have probably thought it was slow. Good. You know, um, so the, the whole mechanics, the whole editing filming process had been done, done so well just to make um, a music video. And of course, it, it had the feel of a music video, which again, I think was all important. You know, there is... It's, I won't say it's cliche, but, you know, um, some music videos can be mini films, others just are imagery to go with videos, but they're, they're a kind of form of their own, you know, they're, they're stories or sequences that have to be told in the length of time that the track takes to play, and um, they've become a sort of art form in themselves, and, you know, to think the machinima could be a sort of subdivision of, um, in that particular genre, um it's fascinating and we we said i i know on this show we end up showing a lot after you know the main show of uh, of that kind of thing where people are just taking tracks uh, some of them not always legitimately and interpreted them you know and i i you know um i'm surprised copyright for actually is ever an issue because you know look at music videos um on tv um regular ones on mtv i mean they're write-offs you know they they don't worry about copyright they're put out there to sell a band to sell concert tickets or to sell an album well it, it's the music that relays the message you yeah know, that's that's what really gets the point across uh um with 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 what inadequacies that machinima incurs by being machinima, music can take up that slack. Yeah. You, you, you know, if you know what I'm saying there, you know, where you, you yeah. don't have. And so that's for that reason, I think music videos and commercials or advertisements will probably be one of the first mainstream ways that machinima finds its place in mainstream. Yeah, very good point, actually. Um, you know. also, also, Mel, I, I would, I would, uh, I would note that when you're talking about some place like MTV, <clears throat> with its level of visibility, um, that is not free. Uh, MTV is paying a 
a fancy price to the performing rights organizations, which come back as performance royalties um, to the performers. Yeah, um, and that is not an insignificant uh, source of income. Right. Uh, yeah. No. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. Um, <laughs> There uh, are uh, 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 actually kind of variations in this because um, MTV, well, MTV, they have house music videos these days, but they're doing a lot of other channels. Um, but, you know, it was, um, it was a visual radio phenomenon. And, um, yeah, just like radio, you know, you, um, you, you do pay um, for, the, for, you know, um, using, <laughs> using the tracks. But yeah. Yeah. The, um, the initial motivation from the record companies and the bands is, you know, ba bands also, uh, you know, the cost of making the music video is usually deducted from what the record company is going to pay the band. Um, but it's done, as, it's done more as promotion. Um, you know, um, although I love music videos as an art form, they are they are geared to promotion. They're a totally commercial oh, yeah. entity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, vis and, they're a visibility tool, but but that doesn't mean that they they don't have the potential in those locations where such are aired and generate <clears throat> to to be generating performance. Yeah, royalties. I mean the big the, the big money actually is in live performance video. Um, that's where the royalties start getting really high. You know, if MTV doesn't unplugged uh, with an artist. Well, video. from our own from our own experience uh, with cutting edge concerts, um, the soundtracks that we use in cutting edge concerts are uh, professionally done and put together uh, into an MP3. And this is done by Rayo Raymaker in Second Life and. Um, uh, we had been called out by Second Life on our content uh, several years ago. We were very yes. popular, and um, uh, he he does have to be licensed. And Rayo is licensed. He makes music documentaries in real life, mm -hmm. and uh, he is licensed to make these soundtracks and stuff that we use in, in cutting edge concerts. So, um, yeah, it, it uh, like referring to what Tara said. Uh, that uh, it, it, you know, they do pay for that, and uh, you know, we pay for that when we make those when we make those soundtracks. And because if we didn't, then we couldn't make videos of them and air them and use you know do that. So, uh, it, it, and it does cost money uh, to do that, and that's one of the costs that people don't see, you know, because there's so many people in Second Life that are doing the same thing as, as a DJ, you know, or whatever, and they're playing these tracks, and they're mostly mm -hmm. studio tracks, they're not custom tracks, they're just mm -hmm. playing them off of CDs or, or, or whatever, yeah. and, and streaming them in world. Uh, technically, you know, they're, if they're not licensed to, to do that, then you know, by all rights, they shouldn't be doing it. But getting back to what you said, the whole thing on copyright itself is so... Uh, vague that you know by the time you get flagged and by the time you get ordered down and get it taken off the site the message is out there yeah y you know what I'm you know what I'm saying so and, well, and, and that's about the first thing to occur in, in such a case if there's going to be a copyright issue at all mm. uh, the, one of the one the procedure for this is the first thing thing your attorney is going to have you do is you got to order it off the off offline off yeah. the air you got to take it down okay so you comply with that you know okay not a problem i take it off of the air uh and that's usually about where it dies right there mm -hmm. but by the time all this takes place the message is out there already so wow. you're, you know you're yeah. like okay fine not a problem i'll take it down it's uh, it's funny the way I have to work now because of uh, live streams import business doesn't work properly anymore with YouTube. Um, you know, I will I, I will that often uh, you know I get the RSC feeds daily and I download um, anything um, palatable um, from YouTube. Um, you know, and play it offline over the network. And often I'll find that I've downloaded something on Monday and by Friday it's actually gone from YouTube anyway because you know the soundtrack was reaching something or other um it's like it's oh my god i've got this copy offline which youtube have taken down you know um it's it, you know but i got it before that happened so like you say the message has already gone out i've seen it and if i've even downloaded it um yep, if it that's was what we do it at utv we we, yeah. we keep 
we keep the embed on on the front page, and so that sort of puts the liability on Vimeo and YouTube. You know, yeah. if somebody's going to flag something at that point, you know, then uh, you know their 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 argument is with YouTube or Vimeo. Uh, all I'm doing is embedding this stuff, and then yeah. on the back end of a View TV. In fact, I was just showing. Pet love uh, the other day how how this is done, uh, you know we we do the extraction from YouTube uh, and created a, a Linux shell that we can use the Google API to extract the MP4 in the resolution that we want yeah. uh, for in world purposes and streaming and, uh, and and that sort of thing. I I was using a service. Um, uh, well, they they are still there, but unfortunately, the bookmarking system doesn't work anymore. It's broken. But um, I, what it allowed me to do effectively was create cha channel playlists for lifestyle music, um, talk, talk shows, whatever. And um, I was able to grab any um, instead of taking the embed code when I found it. I was able to grab the link to where that embed code was, and it would be automatically be edited. Uh, or sent to a playlist and the playlist file would then play on the channel so you know um, if I added two or three videos to the talk show list a day then when people watch that channel in world they would see the latest ones first and you know it could contain a hundred at any given time uh, which I thought was fine uh, because it meant the, the source code for all the content was actually going straight back to source so people could click on the YouTube or the Vimeo logo in the, in the TV show and open up the original file um, you know, because, um, you know, I, I wasn't copying them and doing it. I was doing what you do. It's just taking the embed code. Um, unfortunately, things do go a bit awry because if you find that something is taken down and it's strategically placed in the playlist, then the program gets interrupted with the, the file not found. It usually jumps quickly to the next one. But, you know, the, there's no... You, there's no guarantee that what you put on the playlist at source is still going to be there because you can't wander around all day checking every single source you've got to check the video is still there. So uh, the, the mechanics of these things are, um, are uh, difficult at times. Um, but but you know, we've had discussions here in the past, especially when um, we used to have Slimmy on, Slim Warrior on quite a lot, um, you know, about uh, music and virtual worlds which we, we always thought was a very powerful thing um you know to be able to perform in uh, second life as well as in the real world or one or the other or both um and we were i must admit highly critical of the you know let's say yeah virtual pink floyd uh, whatever they were called because um they would be coming in and all we would see was their miming to the soundtrack of the live pulse album time after time the uh, the dilemma was that as an end user popping along to one of those concerts i really enjoyed it the music resonated with me i probably know it all off by heart anyway because uh, i've played it so much um but the particles the effects the general ambience created you know it wasn't like being at a big floyd gig but it was somewhere you know, somewhere it, it, it was a spectacle. There was something to be seen. And, you know, after a while, you forget that these are just people dressing up in the parts and sort of basically miming to the music. So there, there's always a question of, you know, that is, you know, how much that is a valid entertainment because people enjoy it. And um, obviously some bands are um, more um, agreeable to um, that kind of streaming um, than others are. I know that um, in terms of doing TV broadcasts um, in the UK here of, say, a virtual entertainer who's covering other people's um, um, tracks, if we produce it as a radio stream, um, we have to pay, you know, radio license fees and stuff like that. But they are, you know, they're manageable because there's a lot of indie radio, you know, but the system is set up for radio. But the moment you actually show them the virtual world and what you're doing with it, they suddenly say, well, well that's not radio, that's TV. We want 100 times more money. <laughs> and the, 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 I, I don't know about elsewhere, but in the UK, there is a very um, difficult um, stumbling block here because we are not TV in the conventional sense, yet we are more than radio. And the, the whole system of copyright licensing just doesn't seem to take this middle ground into account. They can't conceive 
of anything that's not actual radio being really just a kind of enhanced radio. So well, we're we're inter- we're interactive television, and we're we're mm-hmm. taking we're doing things in real time. So this is not much different than you or I discussing some copyrighted thing against even playing something like Mao. Have you heard my latest CD? And I put it on. You mm-hmm. know, I you, you know I can share that with you. You know, this this is interactive in real time. Uh, but the issue of broadcasting it to others. Uh, becomes the thing where copyright, you know, is, is a thing here. You know, if this is just you and I, and we're doing this, and we're playing this, there's not going to ever hardly be too much said about that. There's no difference no. in sharing your CD at home or something, but yeah. uh, to, to broadcast this then publicly is, is where that issue comes. And and I hate to say it, and I love the show and everything, but I'm going to have to take off here really pretty quick. Because I have some. I have a show at 2, uh, Theater oh. Drama Dramatic Ooh, yes. is uh, putting on a show at 2 on LEA2, and they're having issues with audio, and so I'm uh, needed over there. Uh, take care I'm going to have to. Yeah, okay. isn't it nice to be needed? Awesome to see. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, not uh, in this case, it isn't. <laughs> I, 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 tongue in cheek. Yeah. Right. Before you Thanks all for ha- ha- having me on the show. I, I love doing it, and uh, I'll be back, uh, but I, I have to mm-hmm. go take care of that. Okay, I was going to ask you one thing before you ran, actually. Um, yeah, have we got any news to impart on the 48 Hour Project? You know, oh, you're here. On the 48 Hour Project, I talked with Melissa Robinson. That's uh, Panther Chenille in World. She's the producer of the 48 Hour Project Machinima. And um, uh, just yesterday, we were exchanging some logos because the UTV is sponsoring um, the uh, 48 Hour Film Project, one of the sponsors. And um, so and and so what we're waiting on right now is for them to update their 48 hour machinima page they've been they've been so busy on the real life part the front end of uh the real life videos on on the front end of of, of that uh site that uh we're just now getting caught up with the particulars like frequently asked questions what resolution does this have to be submitted in what's my time length what you know all all these things we're getting together for this year i i, I can let you know though that november 8th is the kickoff or the opening for the 48-hour film project uh, Machinima and we uh, the LEA will be hosting that at the LEA theater um, and so that's about all I have on that uh, but I'll, I'll keep you abreast of anything as you're one of the co-sponsors as well so yeah. in fact um, we'll be um, is, we'll is that is the November 8th is the November 8th when teams form or is that when the actual 48-hour blitz will happen the blitz no that's that's when the blitz will happen yeah. she will give everybody their assignments you know their taglines whatever they have to use in their film the uh they will be issued that at the kickoff and, uh, and all okay. of that and then everybody's like off for the weekend you know hurrying around oh, right. yeah you know? yeah no i was just i was just wondering if that was when you know, we no, we'll do a screening go then. Uh, once once yeah, all the gotcha. films are in we'll do a screening in world of the films right. uh and you know that way but uh, that date is not exact yet you know it'll be mm-hmm. somewhere you know within a, w- a week you know probably right after the uh, uh, the blitz we have to wait for the judges to see stuff well we got it we, so we, we'll, we'll, we're, we're doing the uh, digital asset management for, yeah. for it too so that that means we'll you know have to convert all these films and put them into some kind of way that they can be seen publicly and blah 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 and you know for uh, that kind of thing so uh, yeah we have all that to do and as fast as we are you know I, I couldn't I couldn't turn this around in just one day so you know, <laughs> I, suspect, no I, I suspect the award ceremony will the, the winners will be you know a couple of weeks after the weekend of the. Uh, I'd say within about a, a week, you know, w- within the week after the blitz, uh, that'll all be known. And uh, uh, and I, I haven't got with Melissa as to say 
you know, do we want to do this when the winners will be announced or do we just want to go ahead and screen all the entries and uh, so people are familiar with the films and then the winners come later or so that, that that's kind of detail hasn't been worked out yet. So uh, maybe you could give her an IM in Skype and, and get some of them. She's probably tired of me bugging her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was she was meant to come on this show months ago, actually, and never turned up on the day she was full. So, um, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get hold of her. But anyway, that, that is good news that will be coming up another highlight in the autumn um, no sooner will Halloween be over than you'll be <laughs> oh my gosh don't say <laughs> <the> that <laughs> port- <laughs> well uh, it has to be far at, uh, we, uh, we are so close already you know Halloween well, then ha- the Machinima Expo, uh, Machinima Expo will be coming too so I, yeah. I like to refer to it as the Machinima season <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah everything right. at once everybody in the northern hemisphere we at least is hunkering down behind their screens again instead of sunbathing and you know all the productivity starts wonderful stuff okay well that, i'll let you get on that because um I'm, <laughs> you better get the go get them sorted out but thanks for thanks for coming and um i'll see you soon thanks for having thanks for having me on and i'll see you guys after a bit take care okay yes, <laughs> bye bye so, back to me, and uh, we move the camera to the screen to me so that you don't see. That's right. That fan- I'm, I'm going to set up a new that. shot on his number oh, on the hood. <laughs> and yes. here it is. <laughs> it's now number three. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. I suspect we're going to have quite a short show today because <laughs> down to the three of us again. Yeah, um, well, it's okay. I was actually tempted to do this show from Open Sim today, but I think uh, I don't think that would have worked either because the studio on Open Sims on OS Grid and well, we could, it would have been okay. We could have managed. Mm. That's a, maybe yeah. next time. That's a good idea. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, it would have been it would have meant pulling people out of the specially built grid keeping them over to a S grid to have a chat and then letting them go back again and do, you know with so much going on anyway would have, that would have yes that would have been overkill with a conference i'm afraid For the, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true yeah <laughs> yeah if, if if in 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 a few decades time we'll just have a active newsroom with reporters on the spot teleconference with them. Wonder, wandering <laughs> around interviewing them you know doing an editorial thing while the real thing goes on but um yeah we can't do everything <laughs> at once <laughs> these days so yeah, pet love very great to have you here thank um, you what's it, you might actually know what's been happening in second life while i've been on open sim <laughs> well actually no i've had my head buried uh, behind my camera actually for the past couple of days um with between uh, happy hunting and the black and mirror you know i'm afraid i'm just going to be repetitive this week and say that they're both chugging along and coming along really well but as yeah. far as the rest of second life goes i'm pretty clueless <laughs> mm. i really am so of course this is the reason we've been missing savvy for a few weeks that's Every right time the shows, mm. I say, oh, yeah. oh i yeah, can't go, I, I can't go make it i've got storyboards i got yeah. yep. you know. yes i i think we should uh, sort of probably <clears throat> expect not to see Safia except on a, a rare occasion when she actually isn't in the middle of filming and stuff so yeah <laughs> which, uh, which when is that you know she goes yeah. year yeah, round which, yeah. <laughs> yeah well there is well, there is one thing to be said that the Black and Mirror that, as has been pointed out earlier this uh, this season all six are being filmed at once so that mm-hmm. there's a, a continuity so and then broken up into episodes so it's if, brilliant in fact when when it's done, it will be done. If you see what I mean, so it will be, will and go. then we can sit back and release the episodes. Um, then, then we can actually in talk their to entirety. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the organization really is superlative, though. This is one of those great examples of, of fa- fantastic collaboration. Um, the mm. professionals who are working on this project are truly professional and brilliant. On top of it, and you can really see the results of of their input on the efficiency and the quality of what's coming out of our efforts here. Yeah. So just to beat the drum a little bit, I'm very impressed. I really am. It's, it, it, things just keep getting better and better, and it's amazing. It's amazing what you can do in Second Life or I guess any virtual world um, when you handle it properly. Well, uh, I, I think I'm probably allowed to say it. Um, uh, sh- before the show, although I couldn't get Safir, I did get an IM, and it appears that my normal de facto avatar, who is he? Who's he get? Mm-hmm. Has been conscripted. 
Yay! Congratulations. And it has to perform. And what will your Pussycat's in name a, be? Well, I don't know. It's a cameo performance. But apparently one of the demands is that I, I can manage to create a horrified expression on Pussycat's face. So That's... I can then scar, scar her in fear or something. So anyway, we better not go into that until I know what's been demanded. That's of. right. Don't <laughs> give too much away. <laughs> no, yeah, you may have to get a hold of the creator of said Pussycats to see to see about a, a custom version. <laughs> mm, some <laughs> custom good, animations, good yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. If, uh, yeah. Um, I think there might be ways to animate the face if the camera's on the face and not looking at the body, but that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, so anyway, the Black Mirror is going to be graced by... Ever reaching new heights, terrified putty cats is next. Ter terrified putty cats <laughs> running away from Mr. White. Oh no, isn't it? I oh. hope the Firestorm Kitty didn't hear that and get scared. Mr. Baggins. Oh, yeah. Are you oh, well, okay? No, he seems to be. He okay. seems to be pretty, uh, pretty laid back. Okay. He's, he's he's gazing off into the distance. And, and we know these guys are quite content. Yes, yes. there's loads of them, aren't there? Of course, your boots. Have you fed the boots lately, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Did they get the, the, the yeah, well, actually, I think these boots are eyeing your bare your bare toes over there, Pitlock. Oh, oh, look out! Well, they're just, they're just mesh. They, <laughs> yeah, they, they can have them. They're mesh. They can have them. You remember that old song? These boots are made, made for, for walking. walking. No, yeah. well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these boots are feeding. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Beware, folks. Beware, folks. <laughs> boots. I, see a, I see a great boots. movie with those boots. <laughs> I know. I, a Halloween movie. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's true. Hey. I am entering a Halloween festival for the movies Underground, TMU is another machinima centric uh, group of people who use iClune and movie store more than anything else, but they accept all platforms and I have sworn that I'll do a movie this year. And those well, boots would be perfect. Well, yeah. If you, if you I have ma I, I wonder, um, I've already made up the trailer on the channel for the Halloween special, which uh, basically I'm just collecting all the um, Halloweeny machinimas that come in and put them in a folder. Fantastic. So I've got a Halloween special ready, and I've done a trailer for it. But um, I have so many, you know, in my inventory, I have um, a folder called Thieves. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has your tide, and it has Halloween. There aren't any other themes. <laughs> you know, they these are two what? that rotate <laughs> every year in Second Life. So I have special folders that get uh, dug up. What about and Valentine's that, Day and Easter and Grandparents' Day was today? Is today here in the states? Yeah, <laughs> but these, the, the thing about Halloween and your tide in Second Life is they don't last the weekend they're meant to. They last for about two months on either yeah, side. that's true. So I don't know what it is, but I have. Just so much Halloween stuff that you know, within mm. a week or two, I suspect it's going to be pulled out as everybody converts to that sort of um, October Halloween. Then we'll mood. have to we'll have yeah. to start well, looking you know, for things Halloween, too. Then. Yeah, the the the, uh, the uh, spooky stuff has uh, such a such a wide reach of interest, yes. um, and there's so many things you can do with it. That I think that's that that's I think the root of its popularity. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just consider the popularity of vampires. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, and zombies and and zombies evil. and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. spooks, witches. You know, you you pick up you pick up your fantasy kind of stuff as well as your oh, as well as your horror <laughs> horror end of the spectrum stuff. That's right. Or just you know, it covers a lot of ground. <laughs> Maybe Stephen King will let me do one of his stories. <laughs> in mission nice I'll have to ask him <laughs> well the more we've got the better if you if you need anybody to play the parts mm -hmm. let me know I've, I've, got, I've got a grave I've got an animation that has me coming out of it mm -hmm. I've got a graveyard and I've got well all sorts of stuff I'm sure <laughs> I can't even remember what I got but all, all the all the the goblins and the all the strange actually I like Halloween in a way because it's <laughs> Not it's not like vampires or werewolves. I think it's the idea of all all these mythological right, spooks right. come out that, at the same time, and they all get mixed up. And with up a bit of joy, you know, it's not so deadly serious. It's like fun, you know, fun. Mm -hmm, so yeah. innocent, even it's supposed to be for kids as much as anyone else. So that makes it nicer, right? Yeah, <laughs> it does. 
<laughs> okay, yes. so we'll, we'll, we'll collaborate on that. Anybody watching who wants to be an extra in Halloween, let us know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do an epic or something. <laughs> but yes, that's a great idea. Uh, co- contributing to that uh, festival too. Cool. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that I can dig around and come up with something else to, in the way of attire, to go with the boots. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Yeah, do they make gloves with teeth in them, and maybe a collar that chokes people? <laughs> oh, well, you know, there's there's so many there there's so many uh, avatar attachments <clears throat> around that you know that are thematic mm-hmm. that would work with with these particular boots um so <laughs> i'm sure, I'm sure there, there's there's many possibilities okay uh, i've got some other little things here on my book and that are collaborative simming <clears throat> the sim space for art that's um as in outer space mm-hmm. as a space on a keyboard Four as in number, space as in your keyboard, and then art. Space for art, Sim. And it's been created by artists Amit Brunswick, Havit Neox, Lilia Artists, and Mohain Sandalwood. But uh, I've got some pictures up there of glass houses and very exotic looking oh, cool. landscapes. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that uh, I, I always say, I think I'll put this on my visit for the week list. and the Never get around to it, but um, it, it certainly looks quite an interesting one. You guys got anything um, you're planning to visit during the next week? Come on, there's a lot of typing. I, I, we're, I think we're trying to help. Uh, Freddie. That was me responding yeah. to a, uh, just responding to a web watcher. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I'd like to go see Secret Rages right. um, Sim. LEA Sim, LEA Seven did um, Le Pisces. Uh, um, LEA Six. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do want to get yeah, over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still need to get to the to the music one. Yeah, oh, music me Landia. too. Ooh. We, we, music Landia. Yes, that that, that one gosh. I need to get to. We have uh, we have um, we have clips coming up later. Actually, there's one for Music Landia, and uh, oh, something else you mentioned. Um, Oh no, Panic, Panic Mechanic. Actually, Panic Mechanic might have been uh, filmed at um, the Ben City Place you mentioned. I can't be sure of that, but it's coming up later. And uh, Ghostville, Ghostville's the other one. That, well, actually, <laughs> when I look at the machinima, then I'm creating a whole new list of places we need to go to. So do stay watching, folks, because there's a whole load of great machinima coming up. Including a, a new rather lengthy one from Sophia Yates, and um, one which is actually is quite long in itself, but it's a sort of preview of another new machinima that's coming up. Um, oh, I'm getting the keyboard noises again. Um, Just unmute myself. Yeah. The um, oh, sorry, um, I lost it again now. Right. Um, it's based on, and I think this may be connected with a bill we saw at the um, Second Life Birthday Bill, where there was this sort of um, sort of um, shanty town, sort of trailer parky kind of town with a flying saucer above it. Oh, right, right. Uh, and I think, um, if I recall, they were actually showing that off as a sort of base of um, a machinima project they were working on. If so, I'm pretty sure the clip that's actually coming up is um, a, a preview of that for want of a better word i'm just trying to find it here it's called uh it, yeah here it is it's it actually um it's actually the first thing on the list after the show it actually sort of comes on when you first start watching you think it's like an in-world news broadcast because uh, somebody's with their mic reporting from you know uh-huh. and then and then you realize it's not it's like a, a um a film sequence from the machinima sort of reporting on the alien invasion oh, or cool. something <laughs> so it's, it's called lolita meets the press but it is clearly a, a forerunner of a, a, a greater machinima project to come so um cool. yeah so quite fascinating stuff there um right um I don't, oh this is wonderful i'd I like to remind people about bethlehem forest this is what one you gave me ages ago pet love saying if you want to get a <coughs> great, forest yes yeah Bentham, uh, yeah beautiful it was a nice blog from somebody called loverdag wordpress.com 
com sure in the week you know just full of photos of it and mm-hmm. i just thought of photos and think i ought to go there hang on i've already been there you know, <laughs> but, yeah. it, you know you just look at the images and think right yeah i need to right, go back there right 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 uh, yeah, yeah that was so. a very beautiful place and another great place is still to go to it's been there since i started second life um chakran forest have you ever been there you- Oh, yes. I'm sure you've been there, yeah. A long while ago, to be honest. It's but, still uh, there, and it is still mesmerizing. It's beautiful. It's nice when uh, stuff manages to... Uh, survive. Uh, yeah. Either it's a, it's to survive, yeah, generate enough income from whatever source uh, that the uh, creator, sim owner, is able to continue. Yes, mm-hmm. He has hunts, or she, I don't, I'm not sure who makes it, but um, who runs it. But they have a, a couple of little hunts that go on there, too, at Chakran. So that's pretty cool. You find jewels, and you learn about uh, inf- a couple of, like, real light touches on environmental things, I think. And um, you get crystals. It's, it's pretty, it's nice. It's in keeping with the uh, feel of the forest. And uh, it's very pleasant. It's really nice. There was another one like that, with, which had forests, so a very strong environmental focus I went to once. I don't think it's around any, uh, any, uh, anymore, but it had all these sort of ground level ecosystems, and then it had a, a mountain range you could travel up. And it really, you know, it was all on one sim, I think, but it was so carefully landscaped and architected that you could sort of really felt like you were climbing this whole mountain and mm-hmm. sort of cur- curved around it. Neat. And, you know, it actually had a feel of something far bigger than it actually was. So, um, I forget the name of it. Uh, we're talking about music earlier, and here's another old one, I think, actually. Uh, who's the SL Inquirer at the bottom this week? But the Guitar Museum of Second Life. Have you ever been here? I have not. Um, no. That, if it's what I think it is, um, oh, phooey, um that one of the major guitar brands had a uh, I had a sim uh, Gibson, Gibson. Mm-hmm. yeah um, yeah and my recollection is that, that that was part of the Gibson sim you know that but sounds familiar now that. that you mention it I might have been there uh, I I know they ha- they had an exhibit of Gibsons uh-huh. that included I, a whole bunch of stuff that were, that were not available for sale or, mm-hmm. or picking up at the time when they mm-hmm. opened and you could pick up a lot of stuff I, yeah, I think they they gave you one or something when they opened. I think this is very different. Um, it's um, let me see the guitar. And yeah, it doesn't give me a direct sell here. But basically, um, yeah, the report where Star Eyes Galaxy went to see the Guitar Museum and to interview its greatest. This is really why I brought it up because it's actually got an interview here. Um, Bono. For Ru and Angel La Femme and Veronica Wexler are the creators. Bono being a, a well known guitarist, and um, Veronica sings live in this song. And um, they've just formed this museum, uh, which I think has been around for a while, but it's not a Gibson one. But uh, the reason I pointed out is that SL Inquirer actually has an interview um, with the, the people who created this. And I'm not going to read you out the interview. That's what SL Inquirer is for, so go read it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, thought I'd, I thought I'd bring it out because it's quite interesting. You know, they've got real, um, I wouldn't say working models, but sculpted models of the different kinds of guitars from down the ages and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing, nice to see, nice to see. They'd yeah. also make good props if you could rescale them and things like that. And that would be cool. Somebody on my, I think it's on my Google Plus feed, um, is it Shirt Samson or somebody in Second Life who, um, they, they do a lot of music uh, promotion of artists in Second Life on their um, Google Plus feed, or it might be Facebook for all I know, it comes through <laughs> from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they're forever posting real life photos. And um, she's forever posting photos of it. Where it actually reminds me of those horrible old sort of things of where every motor car advert had a naked woman sitting on it. You know, <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> in, in order to they still do, Mel. Yeah, she's doing the same thing with guitars, and some of them are quite surreal. You know, it's this sort of cl- naked woman look like, looking like she's humping a guitar, but that guitar is 
monstrously larger than her so she's sort of, in terms of proportions she, it's like sitting on a car you know and uh, it's funny she's forever posting these kind of images and i think if you want to recreate that virtually you know <laughs> a few scalable guitar props and suitable <laughs> answers uh, i don't know i don't know my mind is wandering in directions it shouldn't <laughs> there's <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a place near the alpha spaceport sim which i can't think of it right now paradox olbers um is who you would look up and in his pics it's probably there but they have a nice i think it's called the space music or this some kind of um there's another instrument um museum type of thing and they have five or six different generations of moogs some of the old synthesizers uh. and then somebody there likes blues and there are a lot of um blues old 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 blues people you can get music off of them uh, it's a beautiful place it's pretty cool, but I can't. I don't know the details. Somewhere I near Alpha. Mm -hmm. You've now reminded me. I think there's actually a blues museum in Second Life. I'm, um, oh, I'm sure. Something like that once. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a big blues fan, you know. Yeah. Sort of did like did you know Yoko Ono had a memorial um, for John Lennon in Second uh, Life? I've, yes, we filmed it. Oh, yes. Um, did you? I, and, mm -hmm. uh, I, I do so, and yes, Tara. Um, yeah, we went there, and um, she did a whole. She came in world and did a whole performance mm -hmm. uh, um, to to go with it. Um, unfortunately, the um, it was only on one sim, and the guy who was managing it for her wasn't too afraid with okay. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. the, the logistics of putting on the thing. So, I'm, I, if I seem to remember, the thing went down twice before we could get it going, and then uh, yeah, yeah, yo, there, there yo, was yo, definitely. Yo, yo, same yeah, crash situation. She should have had yeah. a, a view TV handle it. <laughs> we wouldn't no, handle it for. Her. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, if um, if the sim had been done right, it was it was some guy was really hanging on to it, like um, you know he wasn't. Open, I'm sure. Yeah. But, but yeah. you know he he got permission to do it and help him world and, and um, but it was actually Yoko who financed the sim. Mm -hmm. uh, it, mm -hmm. It's actually it was actually a replica of the Reykjavik. Um, Is that right? Um, it was it, lovely. It, it was a lovely place. Wreck of it in Iceland. Um, yeah. it, it, it was literally just a few days ago it was turned on again. It's oh, really? About this time of year. It's always turned on in uh, real life in Iceland. Ah. And, uh, the, the, uh, the one time Yoko came in and did a performance was actually, uh, I don't think it was actually synchronized. It was, I think it was a few hours afterwards or a few hours before. Mm -hmm. But it was basically at the same time. So um, not only did she perform, but while she was performing, the uh, Peace Tower was actually lit in world wow. in the same way that it's lit in Iceland in Reykjavik. Oh, that's really neat. And, uh, and also, I must say, uh, I, I think it's on a disc that unfortunately um, uh, went down and my archives are gone, but the um, uh, Yoko Ono's avatar is one of the best avatars I have ever seen. No you, kidding. It, you know, it looked like her. Really? It just totally looked like her. That's great. Um, you know, hidden behind the dark shades that she always was wearing them right, right, right. And, and I think I don't think she had the hat on she's taken the hats a lot recently but you know her, the avatar was perfect and the animations whoever did the animations for her to dance were just awesome. you know, as well it was it could have been motion captured for all I could tell it mm -hmm. was continuous it probably as well, was, you know, yeah. she mm -hmm. was flying and dancing and circulating around the whole tower you know there was no repeat animation going on it was just one continuous performance and uh, yeah i'm not not certain it it's long enough ago there wasn't much of any real mocap being done in second life at the time because that was like four or five years ago it was in its very very early stages back then yeah mm -hmm. all the dances that that were available were, were definitely made not motion cap not motion capture yeah. but yeah. um but but then right around I started in 2006 and by 2007 like the first ones were out like there were a couple that were out and they just caught on from there you know now you get a lot of good dances mm. yeah oh yeah now mm. for sure for yeah sure. Don't so many yeah no, I'm just trying to think of when that was and I mean it was it was back at, at a time when um handle there there weren't all that many people on the on the grid who really knew how to handle large events mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how to you know how to how to crowd control how right. to how to set something up so it would actually work mm -hmm. um and and you know, Mel is absolutely right they you know they only had one sim and it wasn't it wasn't set up well to to handle 
the number of people who wanted to get into the center. Which I imagine was quite a number of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bet yeah. It maxed yeah. out and crashed more right. than yeah, multiple times. <laughs> and it was, you know, and, and, and I think Mouse right, the person the person that was actually running the, the sim itself was uh, not, uh, Didn't not realize willing to, to yeah. listen to uh, more well, experience. Yeah, but, he, he was also very protective of his relationship with that. Uh, the um, oh no press office you know he didn't want yeah. anybody else involved yeah. so you know and he, he obviously didn't have to do it but, he, but we uh, I know Dusa and I were in, and I've got loads of footage of I was walking around trying to figure out what was that going to happen where and Taurus <laughs> and I know and um, trying to film when it finally did happen was you know we got footage but it was a bit of a nightmare but there was some other footage available later and um, you know enough to have glimpse of memories if not the full performance mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's great now in the, in your capacity with happy hunting and stuff mm -hmm. like that you probably know the homeless awareness hunt I, indeed i do we featured it mm -hmm. yeah really really good um, thing i've got a uh, blog from the week um sean charisma wordpress that's um s-h-o-n mm -hmm. c-c-h-a-r-i-s-m-a a dot wordpress dot com mm -hmm. and uh, they did um, they published an interview during the week with the people um, uh, well a talk with Joshua Banks creator of the Homeless Awareness Hunt and um, it also goes into the fact that uh, I didn't realize this but as well as the hunt they have a um, a whole month long exhibition going on and the goal of both the exhibition and the hunt is to help educate educate people on homelessness mm -hmm. especially in correlation to mental health and uh, mental illness have you so, met any uh, homeless uh, people in second life i met, met quite a few in real life in my yeah. time um I've, yeah there, i don't there know are some I, can't, here. Mm -hmm. I can't say i have i mean there are i know on the web generally um, there, there, there are a lot of um, yeah homeless people who actively blog and things like that. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, just because they haven't got a roof over their head doesn't mean they can't have access to a and that's smart the point. Or yep. something. That's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. Um, well, or, or access via certainly in, in my part of the world, uh, the public libraries are all resources for web access for anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and, I uh, met a brilliant scientist, a mathematical. Um, person who was living in his car and he would create these amazing things in Second Life just to amuse himself but he was a, a theory you know he was just right up there with Einstein just about from what I understood <laughs> you know I mean it's amazing what people go through and who goes through it you know oh yeah I, yeah it's really something <sighs> hey well it's okay about that you know, the I spent several years working for an agency that was um, provided was one of the homeless uh, shelter organizations for for women with kids. Yeah. Um, and um, the the you know the the bottom line really was most people are one paycheck away from being on the street. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, and and people who don't get that are unsympathetic to those who end up in that circumstance. Yeah. They do not realize how thin a line so many people, want. and all it takes is a busted car, mm -hmm. a health emergency, and it doesn't have to be a major health emergency to tip, tip somebody's, you know, balance over the edge. And Yep, that's true. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And most of the um, homeless people, like a largest, one of the larger percentages are women and children, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a significant percentage. Yeah. I think um, I read that they somewhere. tend not to be visible as visible. Mm -hmm. I mean, people think of the homeless, and they think of you know, they think of the you know, the the aging the, alcoholic on the streets, uh, sleeping on a vent. on yeah. the streets, yeah, sleeping yeah. on a park bench. But um, that's that's a very misleading mm -hmm. stereotype. Mm -hmm. because because it really does not uh, does not portray the the range of, of people who who may end up in that circumstance. Um, yeah. The uh, the other thing that really can contribute to, to homelessness or has contributed to homelessness is was the um, the kind of the change in, in posture in, in many places in the U.S. away from providing housing for mentally ill. 
that used to be an institutionalized. They took it away. Uh, yeah. Deinstitutionalizing uh, mental health uh, put a lot of schizophrenics on the streets. Yeah. That that's uh, that happened in uh, the UK here too. Yeah. It was yeah. uh, called care, care in the community. They called it. And it was take them out of the institutions and rely on the community to take care of them. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was it. You know. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work at all. So. Terrible. Yeah. I have something else that actually you may know more about than me. Um, uh, I'm just announcing it, Tara. But um, do you know of the Pali Canon? The Pali Canon, yes. Yeah, I thought you might. <laughs> um, I, this, this, this came up on the, on, on the web. Um, just, um, I found it incidentally from um, palisutas.com, P A. L I S U W T A S dot com mm -hmm. and um, Pali Meditations or Pali, however you pronounce it. Um, oh. Fundamental View Redux 10 Talks on the Pali Canon. And um, basically, the, uh, the author here is saying he's been invited by the Buddha Center Second Life to present my series of talks on the Pali Canon over 10 weeks each Tuesday and Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific, Second Life time. Based on his book, The Fundamental View, 10 Talks on the Pali Canon. These talks are re-edited in my talks originally presented between June and August of this year. He's improved the readability of the talks and added some additional insights and observations based on a re-reading of Bhikkhi Bodhi's In the Buddha Words. He's added a list of topics to the end of each talk so the student can use to do virtual research. Um, and the uh, revised talks are forming the basis for a second edition of his book, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he's just advertising and saying if you want to attend these talks, um, you have to teleport to the Buddhist thing in Second Life. Uh, and he goes on to tell you how to download Second Life. The only thing is, he has given a slur which misses out the name of the sim. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Secondlife.com, Second Life. <laughs> Slash one nine six one two nine thirty one, which isn't going to get you very far. So, yeah, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're interested in Buddhism and any of the more sort of spiritual sides of things, that could be a, a very interesting um, kind of event. But you're going to have to look up the Buddhist Center for yourself, unless Tara knows it. And <laughs> yeah, there are well, there's several there are several sims that uh, um, are focused on on Buddhism these days. Uh, <clears throat> the the Pali Canon. Is is the recorded is the written down uh, teachings of the Buddha, um, and uh, it runs to uh, sixty some odd volumes. Wow! Um, it's I mean it's huge. It is huge. Um, well, you figure that that uh, the Buddha taught for uh, a good forty years, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and and and, yeah. and the teachings the teachings were all oral. In that in, in that period, and so it was after immediately after his death that that those teachings were were written down, mm -hmm. um, and so they you know they're just it's it's an immense library, um, and and this is why you don't find you know Buddhists typically do not own the Pali Canon in its entirety. They they own some books of you know extracts and parts of it, but mm -hmm. uh, um, it's it's usually a uh, owned by, by by various temples and monasteries and what have you and available uh, and it's gradually been translated into English and is a lot of it is available online now but uh, uh, it's a, a life life long <laughs> process to even read it all let alone um, absorb it all right wow very good interesting people don't know that yeah people don't know, tend to know that it's not, if they're not if they're not uh, and Buddhists immersed in it yeah well, it's just a day for museums as well because I, I've been getting a lot of links to um, a blog by uh, somebody called Quan Lavender. Quan mm -hmm. uh, Lavender Blogspot dot it. Quan Lavender is Q U A N L A V E N D R. Uh, but he or she uh, brought up um, one this week. Uh, um, there is a clock museum in second life yay just for clocks oh, and, fun. yeah and um it, the, the intro to this is great it says l luckily there are not only creators in second life but there are also collectors who do their part to preserve these wonderful virtual works <laughs> and just by chance i found the clock museum 
And needless to say, the pictures uh, look like New Zealand clocks. In fact, they've even got that wonderful um, cookery sort of contraption clock that we've got, Tara. <coughs> the, like, um, uh -huh. Oh, I, I'd be surprised. I would, they would be, it would be incomplete without it. Yeah, from traditional to modern to steampunk, obviously. Um, even the building, uh, the photo of the building from the outside looks like, it looks like an old sort of English country mansion, but with a giant sort of steampunky clock outside it. So, uh, if you want to check this one out, the Second Life Sim is called Triglav. That's T-R-I-G L-A-V. And the landing coordinates appear to be 116, 39, 70. Um, so, yes, I'm rather fond of clocks, too. And it's, it's like the chess, <laughs> chessboard and clocks. I, I, love <laughs> I love anything to do that has symbolism attached to them, actually. So, it's, um, cool. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've, I've found myself resisting more than once when I've seen a, a really wonderful... Uh, a wonderful clock built in Second Life, and they all, t you know, the ones that really grab me tend to be the ones that are uh, unusual, steampunky, um, <clears throat> that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll definitely have to check that that build out. And um, there's a, another another blogger I found recently is uh, called Zicky's blog. Um, it's, uh, it's Zicky Questy Z I K I Q U. STI dot blogspot dot co uk and um, they had they have another good one I found for destinations and arty things and uh, um, they've had one earlier in the week about um, a place called the fade and actually I love the intro to this she said if I chanced on the place like the fade in real life I'd probably hurry out of it as quickly as possible I wouldn't use the word beauty to describe it but curiously, in a virtual env environment, such scenes evoke, for me at least, a sort of wistful nostalgia. Uh, she does go on to complain the fact that it's rather noisy. Um, you know, if you don't like noise, stay away. Um, but um, again, it's one of those sort of, I think I agree with her. You know, you see the photos here. And yeah, I don't really know that I would ever want to go anywhere near like a place like this um, in real life. But, you know, as a virtual recreation, it's, it's very elaborate and... Um, well, elaborate. Um, unfortunately, it's one of these other wonderful blogs that doesn't actually give you the slill to get there. Um, oh, well, hang on, unless it's a mouse over slill. Maybe it is. I'll see if I can get that for you. Yeah, uh, the sim's called The Last Stop. Three separate words. And the landing coordinate, 53, 185, 27. And it's called The Fade. Okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, because it's virtual, it can be pleasant. Is, is I guess <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess that's the motto you go with this one, you know, because yeah, it's not a, a particularly pleasing real life environment. But, but you know, if you want to just, exp you know, I, I think this is one of the great things about Second Life. You can go to places sometimes that create mood, and they oh, give yeah. you the ability. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you imagine somebody really somewhere you don't, you might just sort of fascinate you like decaying urban or something that you really won't won't want to touch in real life but if you want to film a machinima or just experience the environmental mood of it for a short period of time you can do it virtually That's um right. so you know it's um you know it's uh, i don't know it's it's not replicating tourism because you wouldn't want to go there but it is <laughs> a way of, it's a way of sampling the mood a bit like you do with musical soundtracks you know the best sort of program music as it were mm -hmm. evokes the mood of something um you know and takes you there orally um as well in the case of virtual worlds orally and visually mm -hmm. um but um you know it doesn't mean you want to go there it just gives you a sense of the mood of of the place so um, yeah it's like there you know there's there are a number been are and have been a number of really well done dystopian um, builds in Second Life. Yeah, and and those are th that's a classic example of the sort of place I would never choose to visit in in real life, but they're but they're just very fascinating to visit in in a virtual environment. Uh, mm -hmm. And and part of it for me is um, it's one of those settings that you really can appreciate uh, the artistry and the skill of the builders mm. to be able to 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 recreate. Uh, that or create that sort of sense um, and that that sort of visual impact. Um, so yeah, 
Inter- interesting, yeah, interesting observation. I hadn't thought about that, but that's a very good point. Mm. So, I might, I might, in 30 seconds or so, just to say how I've been there and depressed myself <laughs> accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. No, the wonder of it all, really. Now, um, I've got a feeling people, um, if I mention the words Loki Elliot, yay. If I mention Escapades Island, oh, I don't know. If that I me- if I mention Goonie Island, yeah. well, anyway, Escapades Island, right? Yeah. This weekend marks the third anniversary since Escapades Island was set up on the grid. The story is before Escapades was Goonie Island, a homestead with limits and stability issues. Making the choice to upgrade to a full sim opened the doors to a barrage of creativity is still going strong. And, um, of course, Loki Ellis is a big, uh, well, he does the Goonies, doesn't he? He films the Goonie machinimas. I think he's done quite a few tiny machinimas as well. We're machinima with the tiny, if I'm not right. Um, mm-hmm. If I'm not getting totally confused there. And um, there are, of course, um, a number of what you might call child avatars there. Um, uh, as well as, um, you know, people acting goofy and goony, uh, totally inoffensively, I hasten to add. Is that where all the, um, there was, remember the, there was a birthday presentation by um, a bunch of, of young men who were probably like 12 or 13 on the average, and they were grown people who didn't make any bones about portraying yeah. um, that age group. Was that the same group of people that you're talking about, the, the goonies or... I, um... I do you remember think there's that? several like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do. Mm-hmm. That uh, rings a bell. Only that vaguely, rings a bell. actually. But I think, yeah, I think this may well be. Mm-hmm. I think there are several sort of groups like this. But, yeah. um, and it's all they, good they, fun. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I, I, um, I know what you're thinking of. It was uh, one of the talks at the um, Second Life birthday. The yeah. South mm-hmm. Day meet communities or something, right. I think. And yeah. yeah, I think... Mm-hmm. Um, it may well have been. Maybe she, it was Meet the Goonies or... Um, yeah. As, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, I mean, the, the basic thing is they are now celebrating three years. So they're having their um, three years celebrations. Yeah. They had a pirate party yesterday at 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, at the John Keaton Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I don't know, if you're into all of that, um, oh dear, we missed it too. There was a large... A large-scale airship battle yesterday as well. Oh I'm just oh, here's sun- Sunday at noon. Well, that's just gone. Um, it, actually, this looks like wonderful stuff. But um, I suspect. Uh, oh, here's a poster. It's a lovely poster too. Um, yeah, it finishes today with a final mega brawl as Loki Ella throws everything he's got in his inventory at the Goonies, testing their resolve <laughs> and the and testing the stability of the SL platform. Party time. <laughs> Look, Yellow is great. Um, yeah, I know. So, um, I, I even misread the opening um, thing at 12, a, 12 p.m. SLT that on Friday. Goonies Adventure. And I thought it said the search for a topic. <laughs> um, but actually, it's the search for Tepic or whatever that's all about. Tepic, that's the way they say it, right? Yeah, anyway, um, uh, worth following up there. I've just realized there's even a video on this, um, which I haven't seen. So well, I just later. realized that it's getting late. <laughs> yep, I think. Yes, it's uh, time for a wrap. Yeah, <laughs> I, for a wrap. I think so. Exactly. We, we covered, um, we covered um, a lot of the goodies here. Very pleasant. Um, territory um check out um stormborn dwarfins wordpress.com s-t-o-r-m-b-o-r-n-d-w-a-r-f-i-n-s dot wordpress.com house of emmerich um, uh, storybook events and um, they're all in um, support of uh, Relay for Life um, which as everybody knows here, major fundraiser in Second Life uh, Mad P Games now have the Lennon Park Massacre mm. um, <laughs> what can you say about Mad P oh, and yeah. uh, <laughs> Um, oh, and uh, actually, the most exciting thing of the day, of course, is that um, uh, posted this morning 
is episode six of the ongoing blog, Sex and the Single Avatar. Oh, Lord. And the subtitle, <laughs> the subtitle is Voyeurism and Exhibition in Second Life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and you can find that at Web Splunker. Uh, no, sorry. No, yeah. Web, uh, at W-E-P-E-S-P-E-L-U-N. K-E-R blogspot.com but um, I, and I, I can't vouch for that but um, actually if I recall this series is actually quite serious it's not um, as sensationalist as it sounds but it makes a very fitting um, <laughs> thing to close on doesn't it uh, <laughs> but, but like, you know how the news programs always find some anecdotal piece of trivia with which to end their news bulletins well that's my attempt mm-hmm. to go out on that <laughs> do you want to go out on terrace boots do i want to go out on terrace boots we, we're talking about camera views now are we <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes we are we we we, yes. got, we we got two i'm surprised they're not looking a bit more nervous by now there's two wonderful pussy cats uh-huh. good, good thing they're boots. stuffed and then, and then those <laughs> huge teeth Ready to just clop their heads off. The one like looks it. a little concerned. Yeah. One looks a little concerned. The other one's got a hat on. A <laughs> car under his hat. The other, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we are, uh, I wish to take your camera over to my beach house and film all the. Uh, well, we could have the show at your beach house next week. Yeah. If you'd like. Yeah, it's best to go. Best to stay here. But I got, I yes, got, well, some, I well, got some, week. I got some gnomes and mesh kitties on um, barrels and. Well, oh, we well, have to weird, bring them over. Weird stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, next week um, we will be observing a very special occasion here. Oh gosh, yes. What's that? Our sixth anniversary of continuous broadcasting of this Whoa. show. This time. We, we, this time next week we'll be in what our seventh year, and we'll have mm-hmm. had our sixth birthday. We're starting our seventh year. Amazing! Yay! And never missed a day. So, no. So this time next week, you're going to say we've been now, we've never missed a week in six years. I know. We say we're now in our seventh year. Mm-hmm. Never missed a week. That is actually quite an achievement. It's scary actually. I'm going to think back and think. Oh God, I've been doing this every single Sunday for seven years. Is this the longest show? for six years. Show? I should six get. Years. I should get a life, shouldn't Not I? Not for seven years. <laughs> We're starting the seventh year, Mal. You right. haven't done it for seven years it, yet. Only oh yeah, yeah. Six. Full yeah. six okay. years, right? <laughs> full six years, and in, in come, full six years, into our se- we'll be into our seventh year. We we'll start next week. But that's quite, you know, still. Maybe still. you'll round up some special guests. Like, who were your first guests? They're probably dead by now. Um, I don't, I don't, um, well, well, the problem is, well, we, we'll talk about what the, what the beginning was like next week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good idea, Tara. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's a good idea. I wonder if we can find anybody from the Operator 11 days who's still around. Interesting. Yeah, well, be. you have a few days to All work right. on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. Good. So, happy birthday to me. Yay. <laughs> Midweek, that and is. And Tara. Right. Well, um, thanks for being here, Bet Love, and filming as always. My thanks, pleasure. Thanks, Tara, as always. Thanks, myself, well, as always. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll try to find somebody to feed the sh- feed to the shoes between now and <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> They'll eat each other. <laughs> Indeed. But open the channel now. I am going to clearly cue our little intro to the clips. And, um, yeah, we're starting off with letting me suppress this rather... Nice little preview of a forthcoming machinima. And then we have a whole load of other stuff to show you. And um, uh, if you mentioned amarettos, um, we haven't got the full amaretto. Um, yeah, we haven't got the full amarettos awards. It's a bit too long for this show. That's in gonna- progress. Um, there's a film that synopsizes everything coming out shortly. Emma Way is making it. And uh, well, I, have, I have one here already that I'm showing later. Okay. Which mm-hmm. is, I think, the, um, the party. It's a short clip, anyway. It's in mm-hmm. the last, It's along with the mini hunt at the um, near the um, in the lifestyle segment coming up a bit later. Good. We do have a bit of that anyway. It's just a nice, fun little party clip, if I remember. It's got various mm-hmm. avatars in it that brighten up the day. <laughs> the whole day was a party. You know, I, I worked yeah, on that, that too, and it was quite a day. It was, and it was so well run. Um, Avalon Crystal put it together, and she did a fantastic job. It was great. She had a lot of co-workers that were also great. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So, yep. we got Amaretto's in the party section a bit later, along with 
pet love's latest mini hunt for happy hunting number four i believe it was that's right it's, um, mm-hmm. so that's coming up but we've got a whole load of goodies for you on route lots of nice hearty clips and uh, a new rather epic one from uh, uh, i talked to her about it last night um on the other show we we're talking about uh, and by sophia yates it's about 15 minutes and mm-hmm. uh it's called September Remember and it's really just a montage um, with um, various interpret. Uh, well there's a, a song that starts it and there's almost like a second machinima with a um, where the music is an orchestral version of the same song and the whole thing's got a kind of mood to it and it's quite surreal and, and lovely and uh, since we are at the beginning of September why not a feature <laughs> September Remember yeah. Anyway, it's all coming up. It's all coming up, along with alien bases and all sorts of strange things. So um, that's it for this week's In World Review. We'll leave with about uh, three hours or so of what we call Sunday immersion in machinima format. Um, if you're watching live, of course, you can watch this program in replay on YouTube as a standalone program, or you can watch the whole week in review. Uh, live right now or in replay uh, anytime you want at melbournesannex.blogspot.com and so yeah look it all up um, right that's it I said I'm getting ready to press the button so thanks pet love again thank you Tara again and we will be back same time same place next week see you then next See you then.